the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Um, bless you. Call him every name and every blessing him to be. the Lord for the spirit of wisdom and understanding please lift your voice grant understanding oh God grant understanding in the name of Jesus Grant us understanding. Grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, we ask you again for understanding in the name of Jesus. Let our hearts be receptive to your word and let it transform our lives and let the proof be at work in our lives and through our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. It's good to be back home. I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity again. It was a great time 
in God's presence. I want us to pray tonight and um, tonight's teaching is a call you know tonight made me understand again the power of being in the spirit and truly what can happen to a man when you are genuinely connected to the flow of what God is doing praise the Lord yes as I came up here and heard Pastor Alpha teaching and then so tonight's teaching is a call if you are not great and you have not seen anything in God you may not need tonight's teaching tonight's teaching is for people who have seen the hand of God tonight's teaching is for people who have committed themselves to press into the things of the spirit and, um, doesn't mean that if you're just starting out the teaching for you but this is God speaking to the matured ones tonight in the name of Jesus Christ come up hither part one come up hither part one unto him who sits on the throne blessing and honor to Jesus the Lamb that was slain glory and power glory and power unto him who sits on the throne blessings and honor The Lamb that was slain, glory and power, glory and power, forever and ever, forever and ever, you reign forever and ever.
Please be seated if you can and then be sensitive. 
Hallelujah. Please be sensitive. Especially for those of us who came from far. You didn't come to waste your time. You see, let me tell you something about a call and a ministry. Listen, listen. See, when God calls a man, the anointing is not the only thing that is given. You have to understand this. Every ministry has many standard spiritual features. When God calls a man, please listen. There is an anointing that is upon that man by reason of his knowledge and his personal press into the things of God there is the anointing that is on the office that that man occupies spiritually there is the anointing that is on that man by reason of discerning and being part of the current move of they are not the same are we together and then there is the anointing that comes by reason of the dimensions that God wants to take people into based on the truths that are revealed and then at certain levels depending on the call and what office there are covenants please listen that means a vow that God made with that man that as far as it relates to this assignment I have bound myself to do certain things that has nothing to do with even the vessel you see that then there are angelic manifestations listen now there are angels that work with believers there are angelic presence please listen as a believer he said his angels she shall put his angels charge over you there are angelic presence that work with believers but there are angels that don't follow a man they follow anointings they don't need to know who that individual is it's an office the same way they give you an office and there are cars there are pas they don't have to know you it is part of the equipping of the kingdom you see that it's very important and then there are also angelic presence that signify revelations it is not only the anointing that gives revelation the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto john his servant he said he sent it and signified it by his angel hallelujah so when you're in a meeting like this and you see things like this happen it's an interplay of many things it's not just a generic move of an anointing from an anointed man there are things happening that have nothing to do with the vessel himself there are things that are as a result of the health of the secret place of the vessel there are certain things that are based on the office that is being played I just wanted you to learn and to know this because many times believers just wonder look let me tell you this let me tell you this you see these things God is blessing it's not just that God is proving that a man is anointed some of these people fall in many things are happening at the same time there are deliverances there are impartations there are the, the opening spiritual vistas is like a veil just being open to move men into dimensions this is how people grow this is how people grow it is not my desire to 
carry some of these graces and these possibilities and just have people watch it <clears throat> when god sends a word to jacob it is because of israel that you will also be able to carry these dimensions you see transformation is difficult when there is no reference so god finds a man that represents a possibility and then your spirit and your mind is able to comprehend that dimension as true and possible then you can release your faith and step into it koinonia we call it is it all right if you pray for one minute and just ask the lord say lord all the graces all the revelations pastor alpha let us know you don't have to stand just pray please pray with desperation and hunger hallelujah praise the lord please be seated revelations 4 tonight will be a mighty time it will be brief so that we'll pray we pray for grace we pray for strength revelations chapter 4 I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will show thee things which must be thereafter come up hither and I will show thee things which must not may be certainty things which must be thereafter Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3 Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 how can i see by myself unless you take over i'll never know it on my own unless you take over take over jesus take over take over Jesus take over How can I see by myself Unless you take over I will not hear it on my own Unless you take over Take over Take over Take over. Take over. You cannot learn it on your own unless he takes over. You'll never see it by yourself unless he takes over. Listen, there are dimensions you can never see by willpower and study. It is given like an initiation until your eyes are open you will never see it he said call on to me and I will answer I will be the one to show you if I don't show you you cannot see it you can study you can pray you can fast but for seeing you may have eyes but you can never see it there are realms that are shown 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 it's called fellowship with the mystery you are brought into oneness with truths and revelations we'll never know it by ourselves unless he takes over 
We cannot know it by ourselves. I'll never hear you on my own unless you take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. Take over. Please sit down. Tonight is a call to press higher. Tonight is a call to shake us away and out of spiritual complacency. Tonight is a call to show us that there is more. That regardless of that which we have seen, there is more. That's why I said, if you have not done anything serious in the spirit, this message may not be for you. This message is for someone who has healed before. It's for someone who has prophesied before. It's for someone who is at the cutting edge of the move of God. It's for someone who has tasted and seen the power and the glory of God. Tonight's message is for someone who knows what it means to be used by God. Tonight's message is someone is for someone who knows what it means to have the anointing, not guessing. Come up here, he said. Come up here to a higher realm of prophecy, to a higher realm of teaching, to a higher realm of visions, to a higher realm of spiritual power. I'm a student of revivals. God has granted me the privilege to study the moves of God. Please listen. And I have studied revivals i've listened to a few senior colleagues and fathers in the ministry talk about revivals either based on their experiences or what they were told please listen carefully and i learned this from a man of god that the current move of god always fights the next move of god that the enemy of the next move of God is the current move because many times listen carefully every move of God comes with a level of outstanding results every move of God comes with a performance in a higher dimension and usually because of the the consistency that will come with that move over a period of time it is easy for those who have mastered the strategy that makes them relevant within that move to plateau in the spirit and not believe that there can be more again now listen very carefully when the healing ministry started listen carefully great men like alexander the way and these generals of god they moved in very strange dimensions but then a time came when the healing ministry seemed to just plateau because it looked like men had gotten to the zenith of what they believed that God could do when the prophetic came people rose to certain levels and it looked like those who were the highest manifestors of those gifts just stood at a realm is not backslide this is that you have exhausted every possibility that is within the jurisdiction of that move there is nothing you can do it as far as that dimension is concerned you have exhausted it at that level you will need revelations chapter 4 a time will come when you will find out that every dimension you need to see as written for you by God within a level you have exhausted it you've read it you've preached it you've done everything and let me tell you this listen very carefully I say it with all humility but I have seen you, you see when you start walking with God 
because of the extent of the downpour listen carefully of visions of revelations you are being open to new things and then especially if you have the privilege of what i call pioneer status that means that you are the among the few to introduce that dimension to a territory because of the scarceness of that revelation there will be a lot to do i mean you are so full of revelation you can preach back to back and there are messages but a time will come when the people within that territory all come into that experience they are baptized into it now listen very carefully remember when you were introducing it because very few people knew about that dimension there was hunger and the hunger will always draw you anything you say there will be an applause for it because very few people could enter that dimension but with time everybody will continue to press as you guide them listen carefully you will get to a point where the least has entered like the ark of noah at that point now you will find out that together the goal for that season has been met because god now used you and showed you a dimension and so for three or four years sometimes you will not even need to study anything new you are so full so full you it's like it's a it's like an animal that has just given birth and wanting the children to suck when that happens let me tell you what happens usually because of the joy the beauty the honor the applause that comes by reason of your being used by god to produce certain dimensions you may fall into the deception that the zenith of what you communicate is all that there can be and so what you will continue doing is recycling the same thing recycling the same thing recycling the same thing to mean that this realm that have stayed is all there can be in god revelation starts with john the beloved do you know who john was john was not just an apostle he was called the beloved that means if you arrange all the disciples according to their permit me to use the word according to their spiritual stratification the first will not be peter the first will be john the beloved there abided these three faith peter hope james love john the greatest you see that now and john was banished in an isle called patmos for the sake of the testimony of jesus christ and while he was there he said i was in the spirit on the lord's day that, that's another discussion there because there are things you cannot see he said flesh and blood has not revealed this there are levels in the spirit where until you rise in the spirit you cannot see you cannot know so he says i was in the spirit on the lord's day and i heard first started with his hearing i heard this and that and that and then eventually he saw the church the lamb stands and then he received the dimension of revelation to the seven churches that were in asia minor prophetically the catholic church the complete church because every one of those churches represented a dimension in the body that god was adjusting commending and correcting are we together having exhausted that then he was open to another dimension of worship in heaven are we together and to think that that was all john was being told by this revelation that john at this plane that you stand now there is nothing to see again everything has been seen and every instruction has been received notice john was never shown things that will happen from that plane he only saw things that were and things that are that was it then chapter 4 comes and he says come up here and let's go to the future let me show you the things that must happen shortly and john rolls to the future there are realms that when you stand there you will see what has happened and what is happening but you may never see what god is up to 
you can be a Christian you can still be called I learned very early in life and in ministry that as wonderful as fame is it can be dangerous that as wonderful as revelation and leadership is let me tell you this if you ever assume a pioneer status in the spirit you have to be extra careful pioneers are usually the ones who hardly finish read the bible there are few pioneers that finished moses leads the people and never gets into the promised land himself are you seeing that now it's very important it's easy to follow a move that was not introduced by you it's easy to follow on yours is just to observe and to conform to it by the spirit the nation of israel did not have to climb the mountain to experience god they just needed to look at the face of the one who already went what was in the mountain was now on the face of a man so instead of climbing up the mountain they just kept looking at moses and they would have the same experience but it was up to moses to know the next thing that god would be doing are we together now powerful as moses was you can see the extent of his trial and error they will wait behind and wait for him to go and fish out the new move then all of them will come and follow it was because of this moses was instructed to speak to the rock and in anger he struck the rock and because of that he said no 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 no. this was not my program you've corrupted it you cannot enter canaan pioneering the move of god is very dangerous many people like the honor that follows this and that to say oh we are the ones that started this dimension but you see the thing about it is that because you are at that level you will feel indebted to that level you will be emotionally connected to that move you cannot leave it to the next level are we together now yes that you were the first to be to open up a dimension of god to a territory it's like you are the first to start producing this and now when you are aware that this is no longer in use if everybody leaves it you will not want to leave it too because of that relationship that's how it is even with spiritual things there are dimensions that you can be so emotionally connected to because of the experiences that surround that dimension and when another move of god starts coming you will prefer that the move comes to meet you there but not to leave that level and to rise higher that's why i said it is dangerous to pioneer spiritual things it's a noble cause and it's a noble task but the burden on it it will only take the spirit of the living god to help you the second reason why it is dangerous or by dangerous i don't mean it is not advantageous that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that you are in a very vulnerable position the second is that because of the charisma and the ego are we together and the sense of achievement that surrounds that level the moment you and any other move that is happening within that dispensation that you don't seem to be involved in you can preach that it is error or it is satanic or it is demonic because you are used to being the starter you are not used to following you are used to starting moves understand what i'm saying you know you see that if you have not done anything in god tonight's teaching may not really bless you john was the first of his kind to introduce this dimension of the prophetic a very strange prophet the bible says of all the prophets none was as great as john so john is in the wilderness eating locust and wild honey a strange dimension of revelation when jesus comes john baptizes jesus and then he's happy that he's baptized jesus even john said i may decrease i'm not sure he understood what he was saying now eventually the disciples of john 
had to start living to join something that was a move john was never in one of jesus's crusades they didn't hang him the next day they didn't lock him the next day john was alive he was there he never saw the need because he believed that the the emotional connect and the ego of pioneering things did not allow him to go there notice all the people that seem to be pioneers were those who were offended with jesus the scribes and the pharisees we are the sanhedrin council what are you doing jesus all the followers were excited what is the new thing let us join if it's bread we eat if it's the mountain we climb but the scribe said not so this is not how we have been doing it including john follow me very carefully so john is hearing of the things jesus is doing and a few disciples who are loyal to him too come back look at the pain in john's heart the people he had raised i don't know what john thought he would become but his honor was already there for his assignment completed but john probably believed that he would continue to run that ministry the same way jesus was running it to like a parallel whatever it is and it seemed as though jesus did not have regard for john because we never see jesus making any mention of john go and greet john or oh, john just to tell you your boy is still here the move continues and the fame of jesus is growing john is threatened the scribes are threatened the roman government threatened everything every day was an sword of mighty things listen very carefully follow me i want to show you something powerful hmm. one day john gets himself in trouble and he's behind bars about to be beheaded and he sends in offense listen this is the current move fighting the next move go and confirm are you the one that we should be waiting for are you the messiah or is there another it was a sarcastic statement it was not a question that required an answer john was not ignorant he was a prophet and when jesus had it jesus said i know what the problem is it's a weakness in men it's a weakness in pioneers it's a weakness in those who are trusted to pioneer certain moves listen what i'm teaching you is very deep you will listen to one message some years to come and you will cry when god sent you to a region where they do not know one tenth of the truths that god has taught you and for many years you become a celebrity and a mighty man and god begins to do mighty things in and through you and then one day you will hear and see of things that you were not involved with and you will see. this is the challenge oh, let me not go ahead of myself this is one of the major challenges with all due respect of fathers and senior colleagues in ministry because of the mighty things that god did in and through them and the dimensions that were introduced sincerely speaking not out of wickedness or whatever they were so emotionally connected to starting things that they believe that if god is ever to do anything it is impossible for them to not start it so when they hear that mighty things are happening and they don't seem to be involved they think it's to their honor whereas john was not there when jesus commended him as the greatest prophet in other words as far as this move is concerned receive your crown. you have done a great job but let the program of god continue and if you are interested you will have to humble yourself and join that move provided you are not pioneering it i will show you those who got it right in the bible one of them was mary no woman as a virgin had ever gotten pregnant it was a new dimension now mary had a right to sit down and say my son jesus my this my that but when she discerned there was a new move she followed them to the upper room and waited quietly the mother of jesus among the 120 
who would receive the Holy Ghost was it not the, before some of them were born she had been relating with the Holy Ghost it was the Holy Ghost that got her pregnant and now she's coming to receive him in another dimension with humility you understand what I will teach you you will never miss any move of God if you don't get it there are moves that will leave you you will stand in shock it's not backsliding you will just say Lord when did this cloud pass me Mary got it right John did not John was offended I will show you that even Jesus got it right he knew that purpose was not just to come and remain on earth he knew the timing and even in advance he began to tell them I am not afraid of handing over because it is in handing over that my honor is multiplied listen so Jesus is preparing the people watch this and then he uses a very dangerous statement it is expedient that I go ah. they said no you must remain here you will be king we eat bread we like you remain we like this kind of ministry but he was saying no 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 I'm even coming to I'm a bridge between the old and the new you must be so desperate for God that the position you occupy in the things of God should not matter you must be so desperate for the things of God like Mary you can give birth to Jesus and still join to wait she was not the one leading praise and worship in the upper room if Mary comes and sits in Koinonia now I will give her the mic I will just give her and sit down what does it like to carry the word of God bodily for nine months Mary talk to us let's learn I will hand over the ministry to Mary there was no mention of her speaking imagine Mary was there among the 120 so Peter is praying remember Jesus told us that in 10 more days the Holy Ghost will come and Mary is watching them you know the level of humility it takes to be a mighty mover in a dimension sustain the humility to stand back there is an obsession in men to be known there is an obsession in men to be famous it's a weakness in men please listen back to our story so John is offended and makes a sarcastic statement go and ask Jesus whether he's the Messiah the same said behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world now said go and verify jesus we are not sure again do you know what that message would have done to the disciples they would have said if prophet john is now doubting jesus it means we have to be careful it was a sarcastic way of saying be careful with that meeting be careful with that move so when jesus had it he laughed he said go and the blind see this and that and the gospel is preached he said blessed is he that is not offended in me then the disciples were now at the center stage and one day listen carefully they heard that there were other people who were not part of their camp there was there were some powerful miracles happening somewhere and the disciples said jesus what is going on here and jesus laughed he said you guys want to make the mistake of john whoever is not against us whoever is not against us is for us they were so happy there was a time the the remember the mother of james and john she wanted to come and see him the disciples stopped and said what is it we're in a move we're enjoying you see why they were angry when jesus said he was going they said well, what is all this one now so what is our own take on this you have created trouble for us and now you want to leave you are not going anywhere and jesus said no it is expedient that i go i'm going because you will now be on the center stage with the holy spirit and they refused jesus was secured enough to finish his assignment and to step back to say spirit of the living god these are the ones that represent the next move use them mightily 
I will still be glorified. I'm digressing to make this statement so that you will understand. I have seen a lot of people who started great things in the body and today they are not benefactors of the next move because their attachment and their ego will not give them the flexibility to blend into what God was doing. And so because they are, they are being inert in the next move of God will have to require an explanation so they will fabricate an explanation that communicates error and they'll say forget about those people that's one of the reasons why so many people have insulted the prophetic today i know that the prophetic has its own errors i know if the prophetic has its own imbalances but many people because the dealings of god at that time did not open up to this dimension there are people for instance who will see what just happened here and say no way god does not move like this this is nonsense just because god did not move the way he was moving before does not mean he's not the one moving. The flexibility to discern the next move of God and that if you are interested, you open up your heart and say, Lord, I must not pioneer that move to join what you are doing. If it is God and it brings glory to you, I'm on my way going. It's a very difficult thing. Difficult thing. If you are a follower, it's okay. But if you are one who moves, why will you see Mary among the 120 sitting quietly? I have looked for certain names who were once great names in the body in as much as the move of the spirit within their time was there and those names are almost silent and there has been no interest to find out what else is god doing and sometimes they have begun to teach that look anything that is outside the scope of what we know is nonsense that is a dangerous thing that is the mistake of john john would have followed jesus quietly and he would have died honorably there would have been no reason for being beheaded in every crusade jesus would have given him honor even the scribes were given honor as terrible where they never sat outside they sat inside they hated him but at least they followed they followed nicodemus came one day and said jesus let me tell you we are not stupid we know we know we see what you are doing we see the formation of a new move we know that you are a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him except god be with him i'm taking our time to establish this before we begin to build i just felt it strongly in my spirit to tell us do you know why i'm saying this zaria hear me you are a privileged place this is a place that God has put his hand very strongly and many people from here listen God is distributing people from this city across several places and you see when you get to some of those regions you will be surprised that as cheap as some of these revelations we trivialize are you will find out that some of those regions are in utter scarcity and you will be so relevant within a period and if you do not sustain the discernment to know what next when people come into that dimension and you don't know how to come up hither you will be in big trouble you will become the biggest enemy to the next move of god alexander the way was a mighty mighty healing evangelist listen carefully he created what we call zion the zion city are we together now when you know then they didn't have internet and communication was not strong so you couldn't know what was happening in, in another part of the world the way was doing a mighty mighty work until a strange woman later appeared called maria woodward eater listen when maria woodward eater appeared she introduced a dimension of the move of god that they call presence evangelism 
that was when people will fall down like this and literally freeze in the same position for hours having heavenly encounters and she was a woman until then the way was not aware that something was happening at the other side of the world the day alexander the way heard it history has it this is confirmed alexander the way told everybody that this woman number one as a woman number two this dimension was occultism and he used his influence to fight that woman her first husband joined that conviction and fought her till he died the current move of God usually will be the biggest challenge to the next move of God the same way the law was the biggest challenge to the grace of God remember that the Sanhedrin council started by the impartation of the spirit of Moses upon 70 elders that's how it started eventually it had now become a religious place and when Jesus came they could not even identify him so John had exhausted all his revelation within a dimension he had seen had John returned back John would never believe that there were higher dimensions but then the angel told him come up hither please prophesy to somebody say come up hither come up hither and I will show you the things that must happen I call what I just explained to you the tragedy of complacency that comes with a successful move of God it is a complacency it is it is it is weaved in men is a weakness in men that when when you are successful in executing God's desire for a season usually the impetus to inquire lord can there be more will not be there because there are obvious evidences nobody can come and say you are not anointed nobody can say you are not intelligent the records are there to show that you are anointed the records are there to show you have built a great church the records are there to show you are mighty let me give you an instance in nigeria today the pattern of church growth is that there usually will be a central church like a headquarters is that true and then you will now have branches all together connected do you know that was not how it was before there was a move of god that brought that formation do you know what the next move is because many young people in our generation now have every dimension you climb has the strategy for the move of god i'm not saying that is wrong you understand what i'm saying so the way god revealed to our fathers most of them you will find out that there is a central headquarters is that true that coordinates everything then there are branches around the world it was never like that in the history of nigeria in fact before that time the strategy was to have a small church and be dangerously anointed and just hide there like a seer and your job is to part and release people that was the strategy men like apostle babalola it was after his death that cac expanded like that the, the apostolic church and, and all of that when you read about them most of the great pioneers of the churches we have today especially around the west when they were the way they were they were small look at redeem for instance the founder they had not received the blueprint of establishment and expansion like that our fathers stayed with god and god said for this move that i am bringing this is the strategy I am revealing are you seeing that now but as wonderful as that is it can be dangerous for someone in our generation to just mechanically begin to envisage because in the next 20 years technology has taught us that you must be at the cutting edge of evolution the same way it is scientifically that's the same way it is spiritually so if in our generation your dream is to have branches in every state you are already at the verge of missing something serious because that is not the pattern that will come 
we must be able to stay and say lord what is the pattern as at the time that move started there was no internet to agree so the advantage of connectivity was not there do you know what the move of god will be now that internet is an advantage that a man can sit in his room and be talking to the whole world it's dangerous to be where god was it's dangerous to be where God was. He said, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. It's a dangerous thing to be where God was. It's a dangerous thing to be involved in what God was doing. You have to posture yourself to be relevant in what God is doing and what he's about to do your current level at your current spiritual level you can only see what God is doing that's the limit if you want to see the future you must come up either from revelations 1 to 3 there was nothing futuristic it was a revelation of things that were and the things that are the moment he wanted to see the next program of God he was asked to rise to a higher dimension if you're with me say amen. amen so we must trust God for grace to conquer what I call the tragedy of complacency please be careful when you are the greatest of your kind within a territory pray more fast more because the rest are waiting for you to move and if you don't move just like you they will stay and can I tell you something usually when the move of God comes all the followers are just faster because there is no embarrassment like the disciples of John it is usually you you see which is also another reason why listen men of God we must teach as though there is more in God it is dangerous you are teaching doctrines doctrines will not change they are exact spiritual precepts given to the saints but when you are studying the life the character of god you must create a lot of flexibility and i'm the position of a student even before your members so that there is no embarrassment if and when you have to adjust to the things that god is doing if you're with me say amen An arrival mentality is a dangerous mentality for a Christian for a man of God an arrival mentality I've seen miracles I've seen signs I've seen wonders I've seen the move of God but could that could could it be that there's more in God than you've not seen now I'm going to make a very serious statement I want you to listen Mention names is a father of faith that has gone to be with the Lord. A respected voice in the body, a great, I call him great grandfather now, Papa E. Hagen. When you read Hagen's books and you see a lot of things that Hagen wrote, you will know that Hagen was absolutely at the cutting edge of what God was doing at his time but when you read papa hagin's books with the lens of what god is doing now you will find a lot of gaps and the need for improvement which is proof he succeeded it's not proof that he's weak it's proof that he succeeded he left us a template a ladder to build upon it was papa hagin that wrote things like the anointing of the spirit the only medium that the anointing can move upon is a prayer cloth and he's right because he saw it in the bible but now we know that that is not absolutely true it was a dimension of truth that was seen based on him the anointing of the spirit is as limitless as god himself are you getting what i'm saying now it's very important let me tell you this i have seen visions of the coming move of god and i have been stretched myself because of the dimension of the things that will happen those dimensions will be fought tooth and nail when i say tooth and nail there are dimensions that even 
as a strong believer you will need grace from god you will need to look well from the lens of scripture is the reason why god is grounding us on the word now so that when that dimension comes the your dexterity in the word will make you <laughs> listen to what i'm telling you there are things we have not yet seen on earth that must happen before christ comes the bible records it there are dimensions we have only spoken about the prophet said it if as i'm standing here right now you just see this mic on the table and i'm out i'm gone by this night an internet is going to say finally exposed the voodoo power even from this example some of you are already afraid for me apostle don't do it oh you see let me tell you this yet we read in the bible that the spirit took philip and told him to join the chariot of a man not in a vision a man dematerialized entered the realm of the spirit reformed back and stayed on a chariot and the eunuch was afraid he didn't run away he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this he told nathaniel that you will see heavens opened and the angels ascending and descending upon the son of man let me tell you this the miracles that have stretched us now and the dimensions of the power and the word of god will be child's play compared to the things that god has because the pride of men and this cosmos there must be the introduction of something so divine and powerful to bring the kings to their knees this current level cannot bring the kings to their knees again you can what you call now the move of god go to dubai go to singapore go to the u.s and challenge them they will look at you and say stupid this is what you came to tell me let me tell you the truth we are not going to win the world just by charity i believe in charity don't get me wrong but right now the church is beginning to be so afraid they don't have any other superior result so they just have to blend to feed the poor so that that's the only condition to be accredited by non-christian organizations that the, the world's interpretation of the church's relevance is feeding the poor and hungry and i don't have a problem with it but they are reducing us so everybody's now saying look it looks like the court the in thing now if you don't want to be criticized quietly find orphans or find widows buy sewing machine and cara or something just share and snap and the world will say well done this is what you the colder you are the more the world says well done we are now seeing what you are doing there are tv programs today that will not air koinonia like this with what happened no way no way with the move of god like this someone shouting mm -mm. you are creating controversy that will make the regulatory agencies get into trouble like i said if you're a new believer tonight you will need extra grace from god that's why i, I pre-warned you already ahead of time we need something more than what we have now to bring the arrogance of the kings of the earth let me tell you they have prosperity they have health do you know that most of what we claim the power of god does we don't even have it well mention three or four things the only thing that the church now in as much as we know can boast of one salvation two the personal communion of the holy spirit three the peace that surpasses all understanding but as far as anything earthly is concerned and the things i just mentioned are the things we don't emphasize most of the things we emphasize are the things we cannot defend so we talk a lot about the miraculous and while we are making all that noise someone in dubai has discovered a way of just making what we will do as a miracle cheap and they will soon make it easy and if that happens we're going to be in trouble because a day will come on a crusade ground 
just sharing a fence will be a free medical outreach with sophisticated machines and those who are not healed in our meetings will just enter there quickly and in five minutes they are giving when that happens i'm not being sarcastic when that happens let me tell you something will go wrong because one day the government can shut down a church and say we have examined and we cannot see your relevance the church is more than a charity organization it is our fear and our inability to rise higher we have a, remember there was a time where the healing ministry the prophetic and all these things was cast on earth the world had not caught up with that dimension so if you had it you could shine but not now not now put a poster and put a wheelchair up nobody could dare question a miracle before but right now someone will come in that crusade ground you would think he came to be blessed He's videotaping everything from your face to the person on the wheelchair. They will go and examine the person and say, was that leg going to work anyway? Or was it your prayer that made it work? If I have malaria and I've started taking anti-malaria and I'm on day four, I will pray for me. Was I going to be healed anyway? Or was it the prayer that brought it? This is the judgmental spirit that our generation has. In the days of our fathers, nobody will ask that question. It will be on paper. Mighty things are happening. And a crowd. Now mighty things draw criticism. Our generation, let me tell you this. As some of our parents who are here, there were many things that they knew that was not the best, but they had an unflinching loyalty for the voices in their time. Nobody would dare stand up and question a man of God if they were not satisfied they will leave him and go home and pray for him remember that talk of pray for him right now a man can be preaching and a young man can stand up and say sir what you are saying no and create a debate there welcome to a new level of living where if we don't get the strategy for now we will be in trouble are we together thank god for prosperity but of the forbes hundred richest people i'm not sure there are up to 10 of them who are tongue -tongue so using physical wealth to bring the world to his knees is almost a failed project because there are some of these people who have given 95 percent of their wealth i'm not aware of any believer who has done that now i may be wrong but i'm not aware it means he must take something more than money If it's education the best institutes in the whole world are not christian institutes my brothers and my sisters let me tell you whether it's research whether it's medicine whether it's whatever we have to be honest if it's in the term in terms of well-meaning uh, civilization and all of that go to hedonistic nation that have no for god and look at level of development infrastructure you look at all of these things many of them are already the future of africa in the next 30 years now what then will bring the kings of today's world to their knees when moses went with a rod to meet pharaoh pharaoh said nonsense you left the wilderness to come and show me a rod to become a snake i am pharaoh you show me more We can sing songs and fall down in the church. Congratulations. But let me tell you, we need to take something out that can bring the kings to their knees. In Babylon, Babylon was a place of wizardry. There was something that happened with Daniel. There was something that happened with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that made the king to testify. The king passed a decree unanimously. That nobody should bow to any other God again. Except the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Are we blessed? We must receive grace. To not ever believe that what we have seen is all there is. We must obtain grace. Please hear me. If you history here thank god for the wonderful things but you must obtain grace 
the second point on what i want to talk about tonight i'm just charging your mind the first i, I put it as the tragedy of complacency and arrival mentality the second is a condition that must be needed and met in a life if you will ever attract the hand of god that will take you to a higher dimension is called hunger and thirst it's not enough to be ready to move to another level hunger and thirst are accurate measures of your spiritual health the same way when a patient is sick one of the symptoms in most cases is that you lose appetite when you lose appetite spiritually something is wrong matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 says blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness it says that they will be filled hunger and thirst john chapter 7 and verse 37 let's read it very quickly boy my time is gone john 7 and verse 37 look up please in the last day the great day of the feast jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink if you do not thirst you can stay with what i've given with all the days but in this new day i have been visiting you but on this last day if you are still thirsty come listen listen and understand what he's saying remember that it was not the first day the last day they had benefited from all the other days but in the last day he said if any man thirst let him come you have enjoyed the move of god before you have seen the hand of god before you have seen the grace of god before you have seen the sick healed before and god is saying in 2019 if there is any man that still thirst come if there is any church that is still thirsty come koinonia if you still believe there is more and you desire come that means if you are not thirsty you can go it's all right if any man thirst let him come hunger and thirst powerful without hunger and thirst there is no appetite and there is no desire for more of god teaching you hear me tell you tonight if you don't hunger after it will not make sense you want to listen to something else this is a teaching for people who know that there can be more this is a teaching for many people who know that lord I've seen you or oh, i've seen you do a lot of things but i know that there is more in you there is more in you this was the mistake of lucifer lucifer saw a dimension of god he was the custodian the librarian of heaven and by the strength of everything he saw he believed he had exhausted all there was in god and then he wanted to rise to run a parallel government with god and there was judgment in heaven and he was brought to his knees that was why when god was recreating man it surprised him didn't know that those possibilities were there they were not captured in the truths that were given to him reproduction multiplication through reproduction had never happened it was creation now that a man one man can meet with his wife and have a child that will own ah said something is wrong and so the angels came to meet with the daughters of men to use that strategy to create something else hunger and thirst one of my prayers a man of god every time i said lord please you know i've shared it with you here lord do not show me the extent of my impact it's my prayer and i'm saying it even as i'm preaching here just give me a token let me just see a bit of what you are using me to do and i'm grateful and i'm satisfied let me tell you if you think fame cannot influence you think again hmm. was it not the same alexander the way that went to a tailor went to a fashion designer 
to sew just mantle with the cap that kind of prophet chef cap he sewed everything and tied his girdle behold elijah he read the bible and said this man is me now what is this what have, what has he done that i'm not doing they first started saying you are elijah they know no all glory be to the lord but the time came they said you are elijah it's true there are things you will not believe now keep rising tomorrow they will say it and you will believe it how do you think people become jesus i don't mean image of jesus likeness of jesus some gentlemen came here one time from Kano. remember those that those jesus guys and the apostles now i say i don't know if you are here but they came some gentlemen immediately after service and one of them came for altar call as soon as they were done i just saw the gentleman he said he's was it judas one was judas one was jesus and this young man came from Kano. as soon as i saw them i gave them a big hug i said look uh, my, my jesus friend let me tell you something you are in the image listen please i'm teaching you are in the image of christ yes are we together you have attained oneness with christ based on the doctrine of the gospel yes you are in christ one with christ yes are we together now the holy spirit represents the presence of jesus in your life yes but that you are jesus in terms of replacement you are not like that do you think that guy got born again like that not seen people pray under a tree for many weeks and by the fifth week they left that tree mad with strange revelations from beings that were not of earth pride is a dangerous thing fame has a side effect when you begin to clap for you sometimes it becomes embarrassing to step back and let jesus be seen because spotlight is sweet oh oh mine mediocre spotlight can can bless your children's children so when the spotlight is on you you plan to be there forever so that when you shift your child too will be there when you shift your grandchild too will be there but there are times when jesus says that you decrease that you will increase and many times it is embarrassing you know i go for meetings and when i see the mighty things that god is doing or sometimes when i'm teaching and the teaching grace is really on me i see the shock and the wonder on the people and i say oh dear don't be deceived you're only watching a puppet there is one behind me may i never be ashamed to let the world know that i am nothing without him this is not just some humility creed there are many proud people who say this thing i'm saying it's very true you must get to a point in your life where you are not ashamed to stand back and tell the people it is Jesus Jesus ever Jesus only he says and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men to myself let's get back to what we're discussing hunger and thirst there are times as a man of God come it will be embarrassing at your spiritual level to now join the flock to kneel down and cry for his a greater dimension you kneeling down for the flock can kneel down i'm kneeling down this guy is standing <laughs> are we together watch this a time a time can come huh when everybody is crying for more people are rolling on the ground and say lord search my heart and as a man of god it's not any personality difference you have led them to the throne room and you are just standing there there's no need because you have become the throne room yourself you see deception is subtle so you will tell them to fast and you too you will not fast what is the need i mean whether i fast or not you see That if you want to be captured in every move of God, same hunger that made you climb a tree like a monkey and held on to one branch and cried there and said, God, I will not come down from this tree except you bless me. And God said, Come down, I will show you what you want to see. If that same hunger is not there, now you can stay in a five star hotel. Listen, 
now you have all kinds of entourage do you know sometimes i look at my life today and i thank god for what god has done many times there are times that i wish that i had my life back in the days when nobody knew me fame can be destructive even to your spiritual life i can't go out freely i can't eat freely i can't be myself you see that i can't stroll out to just enjoy what god is doing if someone there catches me there instead of coming to join the light now that i've seen him let me just quickly it's a very embarrassing life it looks like fame but it's dangerous time today is a luxury you must intentionally sometimes close the door to some of this comfort and retreat back listen to me and say lord this is still your boy of before again oh they now call me apostle joshua selman but this is still your boy again and god says are you still as hungry as before he say hungrier than before oh god after the miracles yes sir after the fame yes sir And then he says, now I will take you and show you higher things. Hunger can be discerned. And let me tell you this. If you are a man of God, please listen. Your congregation will be a reflection of your hunger. The moment you become complacent, that impartation will come on them. They will strangely find out that the grace is no longer there. Everybody say hunger. almost 80 to 85 percent of the time if you meet me if i'm not studying i'm listening to a message or something there are times i just return from a ministration right there just entering my hotel room you would think i should lie down and cross my leg i started playing a message before i quickly went to go and preach now that i'm back thank god for the mighty things sincerely god is my witness there are few times that i think about a meeting and what happened once I leave that place, it's all right. If you ever ask me, how is the meeting? The only thing you will hear is fine. Doesn't matter what happened. The answer is fine. That's it. One of the mighty things that happened here, fine. A few times, some of you send me pictures and clips of what happened. And I look at it. Whoa, you mean this is what happened? Lord, I give you praise. Let's continue. Do you know why? Because you see, you prepared for today, yesterday. You don't prepare for tomorrow tomorrow you prepare for tomorrow today they are celebrating what you did yesterday if you are not doing anything today there will be nothing to celebrate tomorrow listen to me you have to learn this those who win olympic as soon as they are done they rest for a while go on a vacation one month and they're already preparing for the next olympic champions don't rest champions move not in a competitive manner there is more in god listen to me you are not going to clap for me now because someone fell under the anointing you may do that for your president in your small fellowship you're not going to say glory be to god koinonia was powerful because someone was shaking no there are testimonies today that if you hear in another church you will stand up and clap i watch here somebody would give a very big testimony and coin up not people just clap one hand and say is this it go and sit down we want something more and you are right you are right you are right because your capacity is being expanded that means yesterday's food will not feed you give an adult a baby's food and you say this is for what the baby is grateful for having it but the adult is still hungry don't you know that the more you grow the more the nourishment must be strong in size and quality the burden of being at the cutting edge of god's move will require you to be listen listen that hunger must remain in you that hunger must remain in you you see all the wonderful things that just happened when the, the meeting just started I go back to God let me tell you something with me and God 
there are few times and i want to be very sincere with you god is in this place there are few times where god comments on any meeting that i've gone to no this is the realm of champions you don't talk like mediocres i don't come back to god and god says ah son you did a great job in that crusade what for now let's continue the training like a coach looks at an athlete you are the best in the field and after they snap you and do everything the coach is watching you not in anger he's impressed and once you come he says go and change your clothes wait for me in the field it's proof of his love you have conquered that standard and he takes you higher this is what happened to david david was so david exhausted the realm of his generation and rose up into another realm and began to see the coronation of the messiah the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand no other prophet saw that it was david that understood the excellency of the spirit the spirit was never given without measure to people please listen and now david had got it he said cast me not away from your presence take not other prophets were comfortable with the holy spirit going and coming david said but i've seen that a move of god will come when this grace the spirit will come and stay lord can i not enter that move hunger hunger took david to the secret place as a king the palace did not mean anything to him he said i'd rather be a doorkeeper i'd rather be an usher let me be an usher the next move than to be a lord in the former move hunger and thirst for you dry and weary land I hunger and thirst for you Try and feel your land For all I want is you your heart all I want is you Lord thank you for the revelations thank you for the miracles for the word of knowledge the prophetic but Lord I thank you for yesterday's wine but I need the wine of today and tomorrow I hunger the must trust God for your secret place to have such a high standard that no matter what you are doing currently when you get back to the secret place you will see that it's a step out of the if your bar is too small pride will kill you if your bar is too small one successful program will kill you that's why you see all these young guys listen listen sometimes i talk to them and i encourage them don't let successful programs enter you don't let successful concerts enter you are you seeing that there are people whose spiritual lives went down there are people who could not pursue and seek after god again the next move of god success can depreciate your pace because when you are motivated by a need to hit a standard listen it will give you an impetus but where there is no where there is nothing to prove again there is no hunger
when you go for a meeting today whether you say god bless you and leave nobody will ever say oh he doesn't have revelation oh come on the track record is there nobody will ever say oh he cannot heal that's why he just did altar call and sat down when you are starting out in ministry the pressure to make your calling and election choice upon you so even in five minutes you want to do everything at once you want to prophesy you want to give word of knowledge you want to heal you want to share the latest revelation but as god begins to crown your 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 your, your life with undeniable graces and honor you get to a point where the pressure to rise is not there and it shows that you have plateaued it shows that you have arrived but when your hunger remains ah. when i was preparing this message i was praying for my own self i said lord my hunger should be larger than every anybody's own in this ministry otherwise how can i lead hunger i've prayed for but show me something else about prayer i've seen your power before but show me the one I've not seen. I've seen your anointing. But show me something else. I have seen the spirit of revelation. But show me something else. I have seen angels. But show me another dimension. At the apex of his apostolic ministry. Look at a man's hunger. That I may know him. That I may know him. Paul. I hope you know the doctrine of scripture starts from the writings of paul the acts of the apostles down to revelation the gospels do not contain doctrines no the doctrines of scripture are embedded there some of them were just shadows as presented paul single-handedly wrote to third do you know what it means for a man to create the study curriculum of the church it was not just jesus that wrote it Paul sat down and wrote to thirds. The, the limit of our spiritual growth is scripture. That is the boundary given to us for growth. And a man sat down by the spirit and wrote it. Yet when that man finished writing it, he said that I may know him. That I may know him. Oh God that I may know you. That I may know you. I have seen your power but that I may know you. A man of God said he went for a pastor's conference one time and Pastor E.A. Adeboye was there. And when it was time for all the men of God to pray, he said he wanted to lie down close to him to hear what kind of prayer a man at this realm would pray. And he said when he lay down all through for more than one hour, all that he was saying is mercy, mercy Lord, mercy, mercy Lord mercy the young minister there is in power power lord result open doors oh god offering send help us that 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 small kiosk like building must be completed whereas there is a man here with kilometers as an estate and his language and his desire mercy he has learned that one of the most important things is the mercy of god Are you getting what I'm telling you now? Hunger. Hunger. If you're a pastor here, please minimize just praying for power and cry for hunger. Go back and buy the same new notebooks you bought that the spirit of revelation came to honor it. You have stopped buying it. Go and buy them again. Go and find a place where you used to sit alone with God. I'm too busy. I have counseling to do. I have mentees and sons in ministry. And you would die there. And they will go to the next move. Because they are followers. Matter, matter. You are worried and obsessed about many things. But one thing is needful. To sit at the master's feet. Please listen to me. The things you did. That brought you to this realm. Go back and start creating the atmospheres for them again. 
hear what I'm telling you. This is not the issue of I'm a big man now. No, 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 no. No. I have my notebooks. You see my notebooks. I can I can gather all of them for you from the time I started working with God. When I go for retreats, I go with all of them. All of them. Lord, what did you say? My God, look at what you said. I bought new ones for tomorrow. I buy it like this and I show the Lord. I say, Lord, see it. Your student is here again. Packs of Biro. I'm ready. Because if you are not ready to hear and listen and write, he's not ready to speak. The level that Koinonia is right now is already exhausted there. I'm already preparing and aligning for the next seasons. Not today. The preparation of yesterday brought us to where we are today. Thank God for what God is doing around the world through this ministry. But my brothers and my sisters, is child's play. And if we remain complacent, clapping, we will become like the old wine. We must be at the cutting edge of God's move through hunger. Genuine hunger. Oh, that we'll have men and women of God again who will organize program for others but for yourself. You organize a program with the same energy for others for yourself. Hunger. Next point. My time is up. My God. You want to come up higher in the spirit. You will need an encounter with the spirit of prayer and supplication. Please write it down. This is one of the dimensions where the prayer ministry is irreplaceable. If it is the next level and the next move of God, there is no, there is nothing you will do to replace the ministry of prayer. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Please write it quickly. Call on to me and I will answer. The revelation is an answer. It's a response. I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that are not yet captured in your experience. Call on to me. Call on to me. Let me tell you something I've observed. And I, I say this respectfully. And I think it's a correction. That the body of Christ needs to get. There are few believers who pray for edification. Most believers have left the ministry of edification through prayer. Most of our prayer is either warfare or request. There's nothing wrong with warfare, there's nothing wrong with request. But let me tell you the dimension of the growth dimension of prayer is for edification where you don't enter the place of prayer with a prayer request where less than five percent of your prayer is in english you are not just entering to harass god you are not just entering to say lord there are powers sitting on my destiny leave destiny the goal is edification and you feel the growth you feel the stressing from your spirit man very few believers pray for edification you can know it because you stand near them they are weak as weak as whatever they love god but their capacity is weak strength is discernible it's why we fall off over everything you don't get this miracle you don't get that miracle you harass god all around but there is a level of strength and stability please hear me the next move of god will come on the wings of genuine prayer thank god for miracle service don't get me wrong there is a place of supplication and all of that and there is a place of intercession for others but can i tell you this those who were here many years ago in zaria will tell you there were few times when many people today that are greatly used by god around there were a few times where people took out time to actually pray for their own request believers who gather and just are praying no prayer point no prayer request is towards the end of the prayer they'll just say lord just to let you know we have not eaten 
and we trust your grace for supplies just to let you know that we have this 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 issue but the average believer right now prays but our prayer does not bring the level of growth and stamina because that prayer is largely driven by lust the need for things so i can go to pray and spend six hours there correct well done but that six hours is almost five hours of harassing god when will the power come oh god is that prayer that's inquiry you've not started praying there are few believers who can who can pray if a request is not if a prayer point is not raised you want them to pray you have to raise a prayer point say this then they say oh I yeah, now follow and I pray it turn it into a prayer point but when you say let's pray they just stand and say so what should we do now and other people are praying and they are just watching but when it's all right everybody stand up Lord Jesus Lord Jesus my life my life this and that this and that I'm not saying anything is wrong with that but have you learned the edification ministry of prayer the edification ministry to the point it used to be a big deal to be filled with the Holy Ghost if you were not filled with the Holy Ghost it was as if you were naked when believers gather by yourself you will find one brother and say sorry can you pray for me it used to be a project but right now there are believers who can be in a place for many years they know about being filled with the Holy Spirit and they don't argue it but they have not seen the need they just feel one day if it happens let me just be filled capacity capacity there are set there are certain levels of grace and anointing that is a waste to come to you it's like pouring a drum of water inside a cup it doesn't make any sense you need to expand please tell somebody expand 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 you don't expand by preaching you don't expand by going for ministration you don't expand just by by doing Bible study for others you don't expand by conducting deliverance for others no you have to lock yourself lock yourself look at Jesus the Word of God filled with the Holy Spirit while others are sleeping they are the ones who need him he will get up in the morning and pray for hours it was a daily habit to the point that when it was time for him to go to the cross from the communion the upper room he branched Gethsemane and prayed there he spake a parable to the end prayer is an instrument that we can use to correct anomalies i agree but please hear me learn to get into the place of prayer without prayer points the prayer point is you the prayer point is you many of those things will be answered when you are answered the prayer point is you there are many many requests that are a revelation of weakness when you access strength with god you will check and not find the prayer points again and you are looking at time you are not praying you are praying you you pop tom tom you are not praying five minutes you know let me tell you this god loves everybody but he rewards seriousness god rewards seriousness there are pastors who are like that every two minutes you are leaking something or swallowing something there are times that you go to pray my brothers and my sisters you don't know whether you are on earth or you are in heaven you don't know it's a realm there are many things about prayer when it's said most believers don't know because that is a progression in a realm that you must get to for that thing to make sense we must pray our weaknesses are becoming very glaring we must pray for capacity 
in fact most people never sought anointing it was a byproduct of some of these things they didn't even know that anointing was to be sought directly now all and sundry you see a lazy all around crying for benny Hinn's grace in in the secret place five minutes lord the, a, a double portion of what is on benny Hinn. Let it, and god is trying to say no 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 i can give you just i don't want any he, who, you know if you are god you give good gifts to those who love you and god said this is not how it works have regard for benny Hinn, not just god you want a double portion of his anointing and you are there five minutes snoring back five minutes snoring back no revive your prayer life revive your prayer life revive the edification dimension of your prayer life revive the edification dimension of your prayer life revive the edification dimension of your prayer life please hear me revive the edification dimension of your prayer life don't just pray needs don't just pray warfare pray to grow pray to grow that's how many of us entered the realms of visions it was not a conscious request you pray your way till you break the gate that closes this realm and the next realm prayer like a system of transport revive your prayer life say amen there are men of God who don't pray they are praying for me that's a deception is a deception from the pit of hell let me tell you this if you are a man of prayer and you are edified through prayer there is a signature that that the strength and the health of your spirit man is written upon you are we together now your communication and everything shows that there is a track record of prayer you can stand on stage and mumble tongues and people look and the, the scarceness you know that this one is just is just it's not just the huskiness of your voice there is a it, it, the deep calls on to deep people know that this one mm -mm, you have you have is like creating a hole there is a a position your leg can stand in prayer when you find a widespread congregation not praying it's because the leaders don't pray you only transfer to people out of the abundance of the grace that is on you please learn to pray don't pray when you have a meeting this is what people do when they have conferences they now organize imaginary um, um, five or seven days prayer i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but if you have to wait for a program to pray you will never be powerful in this world everybody say prayer i'll find a place to stop so that we can continue a man of god said something that blessed me i think it was dr paul Enenche. I heard something that he said I, I scrabbled it somewhere and it it blessed me I said boy I was going to share this I can I can I can't find it again but I think he was talking around the fact that it was it was something about prayer how that when prayer changes you then everything that belonged to the old you will have to go with the old you because you are now changed are you seeing that now yes it's like changing an house. i don't need to carry the tree that was in my former house i didn't like it so i left the house the tree goes with it when you are changed many requests change too he spake a parable listen the church started on the wings of prayer and we must pray we must pray those listening to me please pray it doesn't matter what nation you are in pray you don't have to be the president of anything to pray right now this obsession about coordinator i'm the coordinator of a prayer group so i pray if you pray because you are a coordinator you are a hypocrite coordinate 
Set yourself behind a tree. Coordinate yourself behind a door and sit down and pray. If there's no space in your house, use your bathroom. Use your toilet. Lock up that place and pray. Stroll out in the night and pray. You don't have to shout and harass the people there. But pray. If your bed is uncomfortable, stand up from it. Stand up from it. Don't pray one leg is on the ground. 20 or 40 percent of your body is on the bed and you are praying god knows you are weak he doesn't leave you weak he gives you strength prove that you have received it by standing up you don't have to have a bad dream then you wake up and say you don't know, i will show you that i'm a member of koinonia Shaka, ta, 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 ta. no no Deposits of that prayer so that while you are sleeping the prayer is like you praying there are people who are praying even when they are not praying yeah their prayer has created a prayer motion that even in their sleep prayer is going on their prayer has become a portal for angelic activities they don't have to pray for it to start Call on to me. Call on to me. Call on to me. Zechariah chapter 12. We'll stop here and pray. We'll continue next week. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. Come up here through prayer. Verse 10. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. And it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord. And I will pour upon the house of David, the house of Koinonia, and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourned for this and that and that and that. The spirit of grace and supplication is a spirit that comes upon you to pray. If you pray only because you are in prayer band, you are not a prayer warrior a prayer warrior is not somebody what is who is a warrior remove prayer a warrior boxer learns every day a warrior chef cooks every day whether there's an appointment or not a warrior lecturer teaches every day a prayer warrior prays every day if a prayer warrior prays only when there are people there so that they will hear your voice you are doing exactly what the scribes were doing the scribes and the pharisees were never called prayer warriors they were called hypocrites are we together we'll take 10 minutes or so to pray come up here then dimensions in the spirit Prayer. hallelujah before we pray just cry in one minute Lord thank you for what you have done at this level but baptize me with a fresh hunger a hunger that swallows up every achievement that has been wrought in God in my life. Thank you, oh God, for the people I have mentored. But a fresh hunger. Pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger. Culminating into passion. Not just passion for studying books. Not just passion for studying the Bible. Not just passion for going to church. Not just passion for serving in the house of God. Passion to pray. Not just praying and asking. Praying and growing. Praying and rising. Are you praying? Honga o God, honga o God, honga o God, honga o God, honga o God.
Take it, take it, take it, take it. Rakata brandas kadabala kato. Honga. Honga. Challenge pride. Challenge the deceptiveness of fame. The deceptiveness of fame glory. Thank you, Lord, for these things you have done. But I cry for hunger. I cry for a thirst. To understand what you are saying next. To understand what you are doing next. Parago shalakata. Hallelujah. 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 In the next maybe five to ten minutes, I just want you to blast in tongues. You are not challenging any demon. You are not asking God to give you anything. No tea, no bread, no anointing, no ministry. You are praying for your edification. That your spirit man be built. Enlarge your capacity in the spirit. Enlarge your vision in the spirit. Enlarge discernment in the spirit. Shanabash, Rakata, Rakata, the Prakatelech, Sham Prato, Sekete, Lakaran, Daska, Paru, Zeketa, Epros, Kemaroto, Shelekato, Sebret, Shagadeganeganemos, Kaprotos, Kaparu, Sasia, Bakata, Emprona, Sadash, Kala, Bros, Geneva, Hashanemakos. Supplication. 
the body the flesh may be weak but i tell you the spirit is willing willing to go to a higher dimension willing to go to a higher face willing to come up to a level where you will see the things that must happen Pray young and old. Satan ekete barakatos kada prakata. Be a man of God. You don't have to be a woman of God. You don't have to be a deacon. You just need to be one hungry and passionate for another dimension, higher than that which you have seen. Elena sana makaratos. Ele barusa zene kali agabarash. For my spirit man, on behalf of the generation committed to me, on behalf of the the mistreated to me, leka tarika to sabreka to shenegeta. Do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Adabarandas kamarato shalakata pranegate katos kele baruta segete bash. He speak a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Men ought always to pray. The the cure for spiritual laxity is prayer. The cure for spiritual limitation is prayer. The cure for timidity and weakness is prayer. The cure for weakness in ministry is prayer. The cure for spiritual weakness is prayer. The cure for aberrated dreams and visions, prayer. The cure for stale revelations, prayer. The cure for the absence of power, prayer. The cure for newness without freshness, prayer. tell you something let me tell you why many worshipers don't receive songs because they don't pray many worshipers write songs they wax album but they don't pray one of the proof of a healthy prayer life 
is the reception of spiritual songs let me tell you you don't have to be a musician there is a dimension of prayer that you get to you must receive melodies in the spirit you must you may forget it after the prayer but you will need it as a ladder to keep climbing i tell you why many there are stale songs in the church because many of them are composed composed by an appetite to generate revenue there are people who used to sleep with guitars and keyboards and they will lie down and play for hours 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 that's how to be a worshiper that's how to bring songs from heaven i tell you why many preachers are not fresh they quickly open their bible and browse on youtube and browse on the internet you prepare your sermon not by studying prayer creates the coordination on what to study if you sit down with a notebook and you just feel i know what to say oh i'm teaching about this no you carry your notebook you carry this when i go to bed my bible follows me my books i'm on one side my bible is there my laptop is there my phone is there everything that helps my spiritual life lies down on the bed with me you don't prepare a message by going on youtube you prepare a message by going to the secret place you pray and pray and you get to a point where your spirit man begins to zoom around a central thought that the spirit is speaking you see that and that's how series upon series will come out if you if you do ministry and preach just by looking for sermons per week you will not last one month you will not have anything to say again before the time of prayer you may not even know what to share in a conference what to share in this boy you just pray prayer is powerful prayer is powerful prayer is powerful we are going to pray just two minutes this is a request now you are going to say lord the grace and the stamina in the place of prayer baptize me afresh with it don't say i'm a woman no don't say i'm a man don't say i'm elderly don't say i'm a child don't say i'm a career person baptize me oh god the grace for prayer the interest for prayer the unbeatable advantage of a life that can be edified through prayer there is no limit for a man that can pray prayer is not everything but as far as the dimension of a man's rising to access new lands in the spirit no you must pray tell you this listen listen prayer is an amplifier of every virtue you have anything is amplified in prayer revelation plus prayer is higher revelation speed plus prayer is greater speed wisdom plus prayer is superior wisdom strength plus prayer is greater strength prayer amplifies everything don't stop at spiritual potentials they are there but fan them 
die to flames the prophetic is there it will remain as a potential until prayer crushes everything and brings the wine out of it one of the ways you make your calling and your election choice by prayer pray parents teach your children to pray don't just teach your children to study teach them to pray little wonder the number one thing being fought in schools is prayer not yet study prayer let no day pass without you praying there is no reason for it don't do it as a ritual but please do it no matter how busy you are once it's six o'clock or seven or eight or nine your mind tells you breakfast once it's 12 or 1 or 2 or 3 your mind says lunch once it's 6 or 7 or 8 your mind says dinner indoctrinate your spirit man to be that sensitive the moment is morning you know it's like a register you need to sign listen let me tell you when we started out we never went to bed till we prayed once it was evening seven o'clock eight most believers already knew it was time to pray it didn't matter what even if there was no corporate prayer our phone and social life was in a place of prayer once it's 6 30 7 7 38 you start seeing people one by one you will see a tiny lady with her socks and her rechargeable playing one song she's smuggling herself to one corner to go and pray later you see that girl come out there, there were people who did this non-stop for years they didn't know they were powerful till the day they told them can you share in a little fellowship as soon as they stood their fire you don't do ministry by appointment it was while they prayed and fasted that the holy ghost says separate separate separation comes in the place of prayer it was while they prayed and fasted the holy ghost says separate one week you've not prayed you are all right three days you've not prayed you are all right two days you've not prayed it's okay no problem you know how nigeria is i will, I will pray the other time it's an attack you must trust God for grace to pray like I said many of us it's not like we're not praying but our prayer is largely warfare and demand warfare and demand so we get to the secret place with different requests oh God do this oh God do this oh God do this we just water it down with tongues five ten minutes and we're done that may not be bad but you are not going to be mighty that way you want to come up here you must spend time and time means hours it may not be the same capacity every day but the goal is consistency consistency let me tell you this if you pray the whole day and the next time you pray again is three weeks you will not grow did you hear what i said if you pray 10 hours one day because of a program or seven days of seven days prayer and fasting then the next time you really take out time to pray is two weeks you do it like that you will not grow the key is the constant connection constantly father we thank night we thank you because you are guiding us into your program into the place of power oh how we need your power how we need your grace a demonstration of higher dimensions of you that can crush and crumble the pride of men lord we ask that you will grant us grace to rise beyond our complacencies yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.
worship you for your faithfulness in this house a finger that has taken us from january till december we acknowledge you oh god you're the mighty god we give you all the praise we give you all the praise we give you all the praise hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord i'd like you to walk around just celebrate someone and come back to your seat walk around greet someone hug someone tell them it's good to see you at the last service for the year hallelujah praise the lord i'd like us to celebrate jesus for the last service the very very last service all the kids the last service for the year hallelujah god bless you i welcome everyone uh i'll not be preaching tonight really i think the worship team and the media have done everything we give them kudos for everything i just want to encourage us tonight i was contemplating on what i would share just to encourage us you would call it a valedictory sermon for the year and the lord laid just one word in my heart and i think it's important that um, we close on this note for the year we have seen the hand of god he told us that this would be for us as a family the year of the rain and we have seen his faithfulness you cannot imagine the things that god has done around the nation we give him all the praise just one scripture matthew 11 Matthew 11 Blessed be the name of the Lord Twenty-eight, Matthew 11 the 28th verse Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden let's read on together and i will give you rest it says take my yoke upon you and lean of me for i am meek and lonely in heart and ye shall find rest for your souls he said for my yoke is easy and my burden is light i want to admonish us tonight very briefly on the subject of peace um is one attribute that is grossly lacking in the world today when you put on your television all you hear is very bad negative news this person bombing this nation this person doing this when you come to our own nation all kinds of stories and um if we do not learn how a believer is supposed to live especially in our world today we will depress ourselves we will destroy ourselves are we together now our hospitals are full of people who have inflicted themselves with needless diseases the rate high blood pressure used to be a disease for old people but right now you find teenagers in the hospital with high blood pressure stroke and all kinds of things the turbulence of living in today's world is catching up with so many people depression swallowing people up there are so many people who beginning from the first of this month probably will not rest until the first of january they are hoping to get the money to buy the cow for christmas the rice 
some of you are depressing yourself over your transport <coughs> excuse me your transport fare back home and all kinds of things listen let me tell you something peace is one of the cardinal representations of the presence of the kingdom the bible says the kingdom of god is not in meat and drink are we together but in what righteousness peace this peace is not just a state of quietness it's a state of rest that's what jesus said he will give he said come on to me and i will give you rest it's from the word shalom it's not just a a state of non-disturbance it's, it's a state of rest the psalmist put it in a very beautiful way he says um he restores my soul he says he leads me beside the still waters the more of a leader you become the more you will see the need for peace in your life and the need to be an advocate of that peace lord make us instruments of your peace where there is let your love be increased lord make us instruments of your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall see when we are your instrument the first revelation i want to give you about peace and a state of rest is that it is a choice peace has nothing to do with what is happening around you listen listen peace has nothing to do with the external environment there are so many people who tell you i don't have peace because i don't have money how can i have peace i don't have peace because i'm not married i don't have peace because there's no admission i don't have peace because i have a carryover or no job or no child um satan understands that men are carnally minded are we together he knows that the impulses of the carnal man is based on the things around him and so he takes advantage of the happenings in our lives all right and then brings us to a point where we cannot enjoy this shalom this restfulness there are so many people worried you see young people just sit like this and you ask them what they say life and you're wondering what is making that person so depressed what is life the only set of people we believe should have peace are those who die that's why we tell them rest in not in joy not in love because we have informed ourselves that peace is only for dead people once you are alive in this world we have programmed ourselves to believe that it is strange for a man to be a peaceful person peace is not quietness peace is not lack of noise no peace is a state of rest a settled state of rest that is based on the revelation of who god is and the integrity of his person hallelujah believe me you have mastered the art of living if you sustain a technology in the spirit to generate peace regardless of situations and circumstances at that point you are guaranteed to live long everyone say peace one of the greatest blessings that jesus brings to us is peace not just salvation but peace you can have all the money in the world and with it will come multiply troubles there are people who were more peaceful poor than they are now millionaires but cannot sleep are we together now 
have you not read what solomon said he said here the conclusion of the matter he said of reading many books there is no end and much study is a weariness to the soul he said but this is the conclusion of the matter fear god and keep his commandments then he says this is the whole duty of man it's too much in this life to disturb your peace every 24 hour in your life is full of enough trouble to jeopardize your life you don't have to be a bad person the world we live in from the person who greets you in the morning to the one you quarrel with before sleeping there are so many people who cannot sleep you ask them why they say kai but i'm, I'm a lenient person abi they are treating me too much in this life this is what they are thinking about there are ideologies that have robbed us of the peace of god the bible says that peace surpasses all understanding it's not scientific you don't calculate it is part of the true representations of a spiritual man a spiritual man has sustained a system in the spirit to be peaceful a state of rest Kai, the way people worry the way people depress themselves is a dangerous thing god gave me this word that in this season it's important for us to come once again into this covenant of peace nothing missing nothing broken nothing that is an emergency enough to rob you of that joy and that restfulness that comes in knowing who Christ is hallelujah our world is full of worry everybody say worry Jesus dedicated a whole chapter Matthew chapter 6 talking about worry the Bible says, do not worry. Listen, do you know why people lose their peace? What to eat? What to wear? Are we together? And all the mundane cares of life. From marriage, to children, to money, to lack of it, to too much of it, to human beings. There's too much to rob us of our peace husbands have lost relationships with their wives because of the cares of this world lack of peace many homes today have become habitations of worry and stress the tension that you see in the life of people is too much but there is a system there is a technology in the spirit that can keep a man restful may that be your experience listen i'm telling you if you are not a man and a woman of peace you are not walking in the experience of the kingdom it has nothing to do with whether you have money in your pocket or not many of us have tied our peace to naira and kobo so when you check and you find hundred thousand when pastor femi gave the testimony of the millions coming i saw the relief it is not your money but just the the fact that money is available gave a lot of us that sigh of relief and i felt very disappointed if you allow money to define your peace or otherwise you make yourself a slave to satan how many people smile only at the end of the month have you seen the way people are happy when they are slotting their atm even if there's nothing just the consciousness that i'm around money it's a very demonic thing listen listen this is the last teaching for the year it's a very demonic way to live you cannot tie your peace to anything in time because it will kill you first your peace must be tied to a person not things your peace must be tied to a person his name is jesus oh i like joe come on the bible tells us that Job, when everything whether he had it or not of course he was human but the bible lets us know that job the, the bible says he sinned not with his mouth peace when you check your cgpa and you see that everything works out fine then you have peace look look at how worry is killing so many people it's one of satan's greatest arsenal in our day 
worry anxiety depression hear what Jesus said John 14 John 14 are you getting blessed tonight John 14 verse 27 John 14 27 Can we read it? One, two, read. Not a bank account. Listen. Peace. I live with you. So that you are not confused. Not peace that comes from money. He said my peace. There is a type that God gives. There is a type that the world gives. The peace you get when you receive salary. The peace you get when your insecurities are people consult witches and wizards today because of lack of confidence in God. Insecurity has depressed men. Insecurity causes lack of peace. He said, my peace I give to you. He says, not as the world give it. That means there is a kind of peace you get in this world. Peace that is tied to things. Are we together now? And so there's depression everywhere you come and you find out that there's no light oh never eh? and you are angry and the devil says that's right i have found out that circumstances can control the peace gauge of this person and somebody just annoys you you receive a very very nasty text from somebody and while you are meditating upon it you hear that ah mama is sick at home and you sit down and say kai what is this life about and satan says this is it this is exactly the state i want because every time righteousness peace and joy cohabit the kingdom must find expression there and so satan knows that every time i can take one of these factors away it's impossible for that person to experience the kingdom do you not know that with all your depression five minutes without your breath and there's nothing to talk about again truly human beings are really foolish the word of god gives us wisdom you find out the way we depress ourselves over several things i once met a gentleman and i saw him so worried i said why he said at my age my father had a car hi and so <laughs> and so i told him i said so what does that mean he said can you imagine ah I can't make myself a slave like that. Even if I'm going to think, let me think of something noble. Constructed metals stopping you from sleeping in the night. Is that not idolatry? Are we together now? Think of the things that depress us, brothers and sisters. And you find out that at the root of them, do you know that most of the things that are free in life, they are the most important things? The things that God knows that money cannot buy, he gave you freely. The air you breathe, the blessings of relationships, the gift of salvation. Most of the things we depress ourselves about, the truth is we can live without them. We have chosen based on an ideology to pressure ourselves look at the lovely sister that came to share about her phone getting bad how many people will not sleep today if I'm robbers take well not I'm, I'm robbers don't steal phone I'm that a thief anybody just carries your phone this gets missing and you see them moving around where is my phone they wake up by two they wake up by three they go to Zaria city I must find out who did this Jesus said, my peace, I live with you, koinonia, not as the world gives. You frustrate Satan when you have found a system that does not disrupt your peace. You have found a system that maintains your rest. Hallelujah. When Satan sees that nothing in time 
can affect this state of restfulness we hate because we do not have the peace of god we depress ourselves we are sick sick and sick and sick people going to the hospital the doctors cannot find anything because they are depressing themselves you you are so depressed you fall down and not even know you're falling down somebody says stand up and you say you mean i fell down what were you thinking about at what age i refuse to allow anything in time it's a choice i reject it i refuse to allow anything in time corrupt that restful state it's a state i've found that is only possible in christ a state of rest you will never know this peace if you are outside of christ there is a revelation that brings you to this peace let me tell you what that revelation is if god does not open a door it cannot be opened ah. and if god opens that door it cannot be closed i have learned by experience that worry does not solve anything it only complicates your life and your problems how many ladies you see them 25 depressed why husband what is that you are so passionate and depressed over your husband the day he comes you are even annoyed that he has come do you know there is a way you can worry over but it does not bless you even when it comes the worry is too much even the miracle you no longer celebrate it jesus said my peace i live with you give it to us again media my peace john 14 27 my peace there is a kind that he gives It says not as the world gives let not your heart be what what is the opposite of peace a troubled heart he said let not your heart in other words permit it not choose to refuse your heart from being troubled he said neither let it be afraid these are the things that choke the peace of god fear The fear of the future how many young people are afraid of the future what will my life become you are afraid of getting admission you are now afraid of graduating you are afraid of getting a job you are afraid of not getting one ah. he leads me and guides me to the city of Papa. he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny me and guides me to the city of Papa. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Anxiety is something that is, is okay with the natural man. It's part of our build up as natural men. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. Anxiety. Right? anxiety anxiety has depressed people it is that lack of peace anxiousness anxious about everything oh i want to know what tomorrow holds i want to know what this holds and we we go into all kinds of ungodly strategies because we are afraid how many parents have gone to make sacrifices for their children tell me what the future of my child will be will he be great will he not be great tell me this and they say okay go and bring a cow go and bring a ram i want to know i'm afraid let me know if tell me if i will live up to 10 years Abba. there is a state of restfulness that when you wake up in the morning you give him all the praise and you say thank you lord for peace you hear news that is depressing and you say lord in all things I cannot explain what has happened but lord i thank you i i may not know the details but one thing i know is that you are faithful you are faithful for the things you've done for me for the life you've given me 
draw me close to you There's too much anxiety in our world. We are afraid. We are insecure. Right? We are troubled over nothing. Watch students when result is about to come out. Something that will be pasted and you will know. Anxiety makes people to be roaming around. They see a lecturer and they are good afternoon, sir. Did I pass? Just be patient. Something that in the next 10 minutes will be pasted there and will be left there. Anxiety. Do you know anxiety can preempt you and open up seasons that was not supposed to be open? Anxiety can make you do things. You can go ahead of your destiny to your detriment. of God that surpasses all understanding and people look at you if you are a man of peace you must be strange because people look at you and say ah is it not you they said your father died and you say well I cried but to him be all the glory you say no 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 let's go and find out we must trace the root of this and you say God is faithful ah. you are rejoicing and they tell you one million naira has entered your account you say I rejoice but it doesn't make any difference I am still restful and God says so the one million you say well I'm happy it doesn't change anything and the devil says where in the world do I get this person how come you have a constant state of rest regardless of what happens you are in a relationship with a guy you are happy planning your wedding and he looks and says I'm not doing it and while you cry he says Lord you are faithful I may not have him but I have you give me you everything else can wait give me you i hope i'm not too late lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you lord give me you listen many of us do not know the value and the, the treasure of having Jesus Christ. I know we, we profess it, we claim we know, but the truth is, it's not in our lives. The, our, our unrestfulness shows Jesus there is something that is higher than him in our life. Listen, if I give you one million, Sam, right? Let me use money so that we understand. If I give you one million, Sam, and you see five naira falling on the ground will you leave the one million to pick it if you leave the one million to pick it what does that mean it's impossible for you to say i value this that's what that's what is responsible for the turbulence in our lives you have the greatest gift and you throw him away and you are looking at other things that are mundane because in your mind although we claim through our songs that he is everything but the truth of the matter is that our passion and obsession about things of a lesser value show that they are, out, they are truly the gods in our life. When a man has Jesus Christ, listen, please hear me. I know we live in a society that thinks what I'm saying is old school. When a man has the Christ and the revelation of the operation of the kingdom, you have the greatest gift in your life brothers and sisters whether in plenty or in little you are a man of peace how many gentlemen are about to be bad fathers because their joy and their peace is tied to things around the moment the man is promoted everybody receives the joy the moment he fights with somebody in the office everybody is going to receive a share of that anger that's a bad life 
I don't have enemies in my life. Believe me. I cannot hate a man. I know this sounds arrogant. It's not the natural Joshua Selman, Abba, I'm human, but I cannot. That quality is no longer in me. The light of God has consumed me. I found a key. Love never fails. When was the last time they taught you this? When they were teaching you on an antidote against failure? Did they ever teach you that love never? What does never mean? There is no possibility. Hmm. Love. So I live a very restful life. If I go back and I find my place burned to ashes, I will look at it and say, wow. The only pain is I will say I did not carry my books where I write the visions in my life. But in five minutes I'm rejoicing. Satan has lost the art of wearing me. I, I humiliate him with my peace. Hmm. Are we together? I can sit down with a cup of gari and rejoice the same way I will sit down with Turkey. I can sit down in a five-star hotel and rejoice the same way I will sit down in a mat. If that is not your case, you are already in deception. The devil is about to hack your life into pieces. I will never. No, 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 no. Whether I'm, what, I'm wearing a watch of 100,000 or wearing a rubber watch of 50 naira, it does not make any difference as far as peace is concerned. Are we together? Whether you are wearing a shirt of 1 million or you are wearing a shirt of 10 naira, it doesn't make any difference never allow the things around you to define your state of rest you are not a christian you are not a true christian i'm telling you this when that happens i have found life i have found peace i'm not teaching you to be irresponsible but i am telling you you master living when you learn to be peaceful that nothing in time can disrupt that restfulness whether in tears or in joy, whether in plenty or in little, you have learned to maintain a spiritual equilibrium. There is a, there is a, a spiritual buffer. Nothing will take you out of that state. You are a true spiritual man. Some of us are probably seated right now, depressed. I want to travel tomorrow. God knows I need 2,000. What I have is 500. Because of one five, you will not sleep. And your not sleeping will not bring it. You see the trouble? Worry was never designed to bring solutions. It was designed to depress you. If I don't trust myself, why can't I trust? If you don't trust yourself, trust God. my peace i move up brothers and sisters i am amazed every 24 hours i watch people and i am shocked as they are at their ideology why do people think this way why can't they be peaceful why won't you choose to be peaceful listen some of you look at you're not even so old but look look at the way your life is depressed worry and anger and hatred always cynical always on the negative side talking about everything that is not working in your life and the life of people why don't you change what you see why don't you change what you see i don't see negative things all i see is the faithfulness of god in my life all i see is the mercy of god he is the goodness of god in my life God has been good to me. If he never blesses me in this life, he does not owe me anything. I owe him my life and eternity. That's how to live. That's how to live. You kept 10,000 naira, I got missing. You are crying. You are yelling. You are quoting scripture. The prayers you would not have prayed to bring you into intimacy. You pray for two hours. And you start checking, oh God, your word said, even God who called the dead and 
call it the things that be not as though they were lord me i'm saying this thing is my own it must come i'm telling you it's not the prayer of faith it's the prayer of selfishness and idolatry the greatest gift i have in my life listen it's not the anointing the greatest gift i have in my life is not money the greatest gift i have in my life is not people the greatest gift i have in my life is the presence of jesus ah in life and in death the worst that can happen to me is that i will die you will cry for seven days and say ah, ah he taught us about long life it doesn't matter i'm god <laughs> And at the end of it, there is peace. Many of us are already on our way to produce bad families because of depression. What is wrong? No money. How can I be happy? Are you not seeing what is happening in Nigeria? Buhari's government is this and that and that. How is it providing for your needs? Have you not read, my God shall supply? leave that one jerry we are talking about real issues now you are not a christian a true believer listen a true believer is one who has taken his life on god's word i believe the word of god to death to death to death i believe the word of god my life revolves around it i will never allow anything in this life to depress me it does not have that ability If I'm told today that any of my loved one is dead, God forbid, I will cry. But in it, I will get up. And the only song that will come out of my lips is the song of his faithfulness. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful. We are saying faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Faithful are you, Lord. Listen, create a limit for the effect of the things in this life as far as your relationship with God is concerned. The presence of Jesus is more than gold. It's more than a billion dollars the presence of jesus is more than koinonia is more i will give up koinonia one thousand times for the presence of jesus i will give up anything and i mean it in this life no i will give give aside every accomplishment and everything for the presence of jesus that's the gift i have I, you hear people say, ah, my reputation is at stake. I don't even have one. Ah, I don't have one. I'm telling you, my reputation is his reputation. I'm too young to kill myself with that kind of ideology. I have no reputation of my own. Help me, sir. Thank you. I want you to get a revelation tonight inside and outside as we wrap up this year make a choice that for the rest of my god-given life i choose peace i choice no matter what happens in my life i made that choice i choose to be happy people see you and say you are always laughing then they come to your house and find out that the only thing there is water there's no gary and they say, so why are you laughing? What's the laughter for? The laughter is because you have come into oneness with one who is greater than anything that can come. See, let me tell you, please, please. Lose the, the affection you have for things. You hear me say this all the time. You must get to a point in your life, Koinonia, where nothing in time has the ability to steal away the presence of Jesus. When John, or no, not John now, when Peter was about to die, 
they were about to kill the body right they put him on a cross and he said no they cannot crucify me the same way they crucified my savior look at a man he said turn me upside down i am not worthy to be crucified that way what did these people know that in the midst of their depression paul will write a letter encouraging people and paul will say i'm in chains in chains a man in chains telling people count it all joy my brethren when you go through diverse temptations knowing this that the trying of your faith walk in patience in chains you are not in chains yet we are depressed please i want you to i want you to weary satan with your passion for jesus christ weary satan with your passion for the things of god oh i wanted to give you ten thousand i no longer will give you say to god be the glory and he said what kind of person are you is it that you don't get angry you have sustained a system for as long as god is alive i remain peaceful my depression will start the day someone can dethrone him and then at that point i know that my life is no longer secure listen the oldest man on earth today is not up to 120 years so what is the vanity are we together the vanity in this life that makes us to get up you are pursuing car you are pursuing jeep you are pursuing this you are pursuing that oh they said in the village i'm not successful let me prove to them who cares are they successful they in the village are they successful They said they don't marry fast in our family that's their cup of tea frankly speaking see learn learn to learn to ignore satan is one way to conquer him ignore his proposals and you will step into a state of rest someone looks and says have you gotten the admission say why now ah say god is faithful i know that he makes all things beautiful in his time they say oh forget that you know you are disappointing us and you you leave them away and when you go the devil will say think on these things and you say no the bible says finally brethren whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are noble if there be a good report if there be any praise he said think on these things this unemployment why are we like this and then you turn to your friend and say why are we suffering like this the friends are tired of Nassau, nigeria they know you are, you are thinking like a non-christian the peace of god see let me tell you what will happen if you are living in peace men must hate you because you see there is a popular saying that misery likes company when people are frustrated they try to look for those who are like them so that they can form a team we the committee of humiliated people and the moment you refuse it they interpret it as pride what are you saying are you not older than us at least me i'm 28 you you are 32 you are not depressed you are not joining us in this thing. I'm, I'm not joining i'm not a party to all of this five years after graduating no job you won't come let's discuss this thing say no i'm not a party to this. are you willing to be that different to ignore the mockery and maintain the peace of the kingdom there's too much depression in our world and I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. The person who is depressed, humanly speaking, does not even have any guarantee whether he will wake up the next day. Yet he's thinking. People have accident under the... Me, thank you. Depression makes them to begin to hallucinate. They think the road is this way whereas it's this way they go and bash into a tree and die see i i thought i saw the bend this way frustration i'm a lover of your presence i'm a lover of your presence i'm a lover of your presence jesus i'm a lover of your presence I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. I remember a man whose car had accident. When he came and saw the car burning, he fell down there and died. If that guy gets to heaven and I'm Jesus, this is the first thing I'm going to do. I'll say, what brought you here? And he said, I died. I said, of what? He said, car. I'll say, go back. He must go back. For that, you must win at least a thousand souls. <laughs> oh, no, come on. You don't die and enter the gates of heaven. If I'm Jesus, you must go back and win souls. One by one, not general. One by one. You die because your car caught fire. They stole your clothes. From January, you are still remembering it now. See, listen, do you, let me tell you something. Anything you hold on to, you are telling God, this is the limit of my life. Don't ever lift me beyond this limit. Because at this point, this has become my God. love him you never hear me pray all those nonsense prayers oh god why me why all of these things why eh? oh god won't you won't you no, no 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 i'm a lover of your presence i'm a lover of your presence i'm a lover of your presence jesus i'm a lover of your presence refuse to get hot stop this anxiety and this rage right have you seen friends do this i, I believe you don't do it um christians should not do that but there are friends that do that um they deliberately look for trouble they keep saying things and instigating anger and then they laugh there are people who if they laugh at you there is a way they laugh at you do, do you have such kind of people in your life oh my goodness they laugh at you in a way that you you don't you you you, you try to check i see that i'm stupid am i a clown what is the meaning of all this if you live your life like that there are many of those kinds of people around the world you will hate yourself and you will translate that hatred to every other person around you. I love myself. God knows. I love myself. I've, I've said it again and again here. That philosophy of hanging yourself. Even if I were not born again. It would never happen to hang myself. No. I'd rather die in a sleep. But not to hang myself. Who buys the rope? <laughs> Me? Go to the market and buy a rope to hang myself? Say, I choose to be peaceful. Shout it, I choose to be peaceful. I make up my mind to be a person of peace. Go home with this mindset and see how you will discomfort a lot of people. Because for some of you, they are waiting for you. There is a part of the gist that has been. It's like a pie. They left it for you. They are hoping that you come. And they say, come and tell us your version of the suffering in Nigeria. And they say, well, I, I have just one thing to say. God is faithful. And they say, please, please, let's be real. We are also Christians. They say, this is my reality. I mean it. I'm, I'm not playing games. And then they get angry. Right? People always get angry when you don't conform. I once met a woman who was angry, said that she's been barren for a number of years. And um, this was a woman. She said, I went to the hospital. They said, I'm okay. They said, I'm okay. It's my husband that knows what A and B and C. And, and you know, I don't want to. He has this whole medical this in and all of that. He's the one. Blah, 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 blah. From his father's side. From this and that. And I knew that this woman would not carry a child for a long time. With this bad attitude, there, the kingdom cannot come because there is no peace it's an equation there must be righteousness there must be peace and there must be joy when these three cohabit it grants access it's like a spiritual code 
Hallelujah. And I looked at the woman and I said, Madam, the issue is not to throw blames and say it's your husband. Two have become one. That's what the Bible says. If he gets money now, will you say it's his money or will you say it's our money? See that? And I encouraged her and prayed with her. Peace I give unto you. I don't know what you are going through right now. But let me tell you, I don't want to know. One thing I know is that your way out must be the way of peace. Depression will never bring you solution. Are we together? Worry and discussing issues with people who cannot help you will not bring you out. Jesus said, John 14, please, 27, my peace I give to you. My peace I give unto you. The Bible says one of the names he will be called is the Prince of Peace. Not the Prince of Worry. Look at Jesus on the cross. Going through the pains of the nail. And then he looks at John and says, John, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. What kind of peace is that? A 33-year-old man naked on the cross. He would have been angry. Look at Stephen when they were about to stone him. He looked into heaven. The only guy that did what Jesus did was advocating forgiveness for the people. That's a state of peace. May God make you a man and a woman of peace, I'm telling you. In plenty, it does not change you. In not plenty, it does not change you. Right? When people annoy you, and instead of you boiling around, you just find a song of melody. In moments like this, I sing out a song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like this, I sing out a song. I sing out a song to the Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. I love you. Some of us are going to be going home. Let me tell you what some of you will meet in your house. Poverty like never before. It's not a prophecy. Some of you, that's, that's the truth. You will go home and they will tell you, they've not paid workers for months. And then you can choose to join them in the depression or be an instrument of peace. And say, look, I know that things are not going all right now. But I tell you, a day will come when we will rejoice in this house. They say, where is that day? We are talking of now, now. Some of you, the moment your parents see you, they will be angry because they are thinking of school fees. And you tell them, no, God is faithful. Right? Some of us are going back to our loved ones. And we may not have anything much in our hands to go and bless them at home and we are depressed. It should never be so. You choose peace. Never allow Satan to depress you. The Lord put this in my heart to share with us tonight. I'm going to prophesy and bless us for the year. But I want everyone here, those listening outside, let nothing be so serious in this life such as to disrupt your peace. There is a childlikeness you must have if you want to live into this world. Some of us are too matured for God to use us. We are too, we are too bossy. We are too old. We are not childlike enough. I choose to be a child before his presence. I will be a child with my children and my grandchildren. I will still remain a child in his presence. To tremble at his word. Nothing is too serious in life to depress me. Nothing is too serious in life to make me hate people and get depressed all around no joy no peace no i teach you the art of living i teach you the way winners live
the key is to hand over everything to God I'm rounding up I know you think you are born again but let me tell you when worry still kills you you are not truly born again there is a part of you that has not been surrendered to him from beginning to the end it will always be always be you jesus oh jesus you gave him your joy you gave him your spiritual life you gave him your prayer life but your financial life you left away from him and that's where the devil is using to kill you because you've not handed it over we are going to do a handover ceremony where you will take every aspect of your life and say god i'm tired if he's based at me, I would de this marriage issue will kill me. This job issue will kill me. This barrenness issue, I hand it over. Listen, he said, Come on to me, all ye that are what? Weary and heavy laden. What did he say? I will give you rest. Do you have it? Do you have that rest, Koinonia? Do you have that rest today? If you have it, it will tell in your life. If you have it, it will tell in your lack of desperation for mundane things. Oh, when will this come? Oh, when will this? No, 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 no. I can't wait for tomorrow. I can wait. I can wait. There is no hurry about it. I can I can wait for tomorrow to come. Ah, no. I can't wait for tomorrow. I just can't wait. Why? Why? The only thing I cannot wait for is anything that has to do with the kingdom every time i get up on fridays when i'm around I, I almost cannot wait for evening because i want to be able to bless the people any other thing that is not direct so winning no i can't be that desperate about it i can wait can you wait for the car to come answer me some of you can't wait can you wait for the car to come can you wait for the husband to come can you wait for the wife to come? Can you wait for the promotion to come? All the days of my appointed time, I will until my change comes. If you force a door to open that God did not open, it will open, but it will open and kill you. Oh, I choose to wait. I choose to wait. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful, not in your time, in his time. He has the clock, right? And if you will wait for him, he will beautify your life. Some of you cannot wait to get into ministry. That's why you will die like a chicken. The first person you prayed for, they beat you and say, don't come around our house again because God is saying, wait. He said, no, my blood is hot. Calm down. Calm down. I choose to wait. I choose to experience that peace there are three prayer points we are going to pray desperately tonight and then I'll prophesy over our lives and we'll be done this is the message that I want us to close coin on with the first prayer point is a prayer point of handover let me explain it and then we'll pray that you get to a point come where you take your life and donate it to God. Lord, I'm tired of this trouble. He said, my yoke is easy. The one you are carrying is not easy. That means it's not of God. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Will you hand it over to God and say, Lord, I'm tired of depressing myself. This is my conviction. I am a complete complete servant of God if my reputation goes bad he's the one to receive it if God honors me he's still the one to receive it are we together if I lack food to eat and I don't have the energy no soul winning no salvation who pays the price if there's food to eat I make God responsible for my life I play my own part of the deal and I don't, I never dapple into his part. It's God's part. Lord, I leave it to you. I have done my own part of faithfulness. I know you are, you are too faithful. 
and then you rest we are going to hand over you know let me tell you how to know the area you've not handed over to God the one you think about all the time the one you are obsessed about and you are almost dying about God is not yet Lord of that area are we are we ready to pray rise up on your feet everyone please I want everybody to pray pray seriously hallelujah lift your voice and cry mention the areas in your life that cause you sorrow and depression and say Lord I hand it over to you go ahead and pray go ahead and pray I hand it over to you oh God I'm tired of killing myself I'm tired of dying slowly it all belongs to you oh, oh it all belongs to you it all belongs to you oh, oh. Now turn it into a prayer. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Rekete kababa shata labaka. Father, I lay aside every financial worry. Pray. I lay aside every worry about job i lay aside every worry about children every worry about ministry i choose peace i choose peace i reject worry i choose peace oh you make me lie down in green pastures the still waters kaparaka to shake it and let it go go to post it take it shake it and let it go to break it and break up 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 just can up and up and up make sure you're praying you are the prince of peace and i've received you in my life i receive your peace I receive your peace in this wicked world. I receive your peace. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible says, casting all your cares upon him. For what? He cares. That's the second prayer point. Listen. Don't think God does not know that life is full of troubles. Are we together? He's called the ancient of days. Don't think he's not aware of your challenges, but he still, he still tells you, my peace I give to you. The second prayer point is you are going to lay aside every trouble. Bring it before him and say, Lord, this is what is disturbing me. This is that which is troubling me. I, I bring it to your throne. Lift your voice and pray. I bring it before your throne. Oh, I bring it before your throne. I exchange my burden for your burden. I exchange my yoke for your yoke. Your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. Lord, that which I've been carrying is killing me. Hey.
Alléluia. Alléluia. The last prayer point, listen. The last prayer point is a cry from your heart. You are going to cry and say, Lord, I lose affection for anything that is not you. I, I can use them, but they will never win my heart. Lift your voice and pray. I lose affection for money. I lose affection. Pray. Pray. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. I lose affection. Money will never depress me. Pray. I lose affection. That loss for material things, that loss for fame, that loss for power, that loss for accomplishment, I lose it. I break away from 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 it. From it, everything I've held on to. The last prayer point. Let's add one more the spirit of depression worry anxiety it is of the devil open your mouth and curse it open your mouth and curse it I reject you in my life I reject you in my family I reject you in the name of Jesus I reject worry I reject anxiety. I reject depression. In the name of Jesus. Shabbat Ramos. Lekete proskete. Enkretos koto lekete. Rekete kete lebo koto bege lebe lebo. Rekete ke lebo to supradish. Lekete kete tete mo kope tete. Reject it. Reject it from your destiny. My God is faithful. My God is faithful. I refuse depression. Nigeria will not make me depressed. The government will not make me depressed. The economy will not make me depressed. The happenings around my life cannot make me depressed. I reject depression. God is faithful. My God is alive. Savior, He can move the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus, to save you, He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. One more time.
hallelujah all the gentlemen say after me in the name of Jesus I will be a man of peace my home will be your peace I reject depression I reject worry I reject frustration I embrace the peace of God peace above money peace above fame peace above prestige peace above accomplishments this must be your understanding you must embrace the peace of God above and beyond every other thing I want to prophesy to you in closing Hosea chapter 12 verse 13 help us media Hosea 12 13 this will be the last service for the year many of us from tomorrow will be traveling you cannot ignore the place of prophecy it says and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved listen when Israel cried in Egypt God did not go to them to rescue them God went to a man and said are you hearing my people cry are we together God would have gone to Egypt and say okay I have come but God went to a man and left the salvation of the people in the hand of a man he says by a man by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt right he says and by a prophet was he Israel preserved listen one of the greatest revelations I've had this year is understanding the operation of the body of Christ the Bible says that the church give us Ephesians chapter 2 please let's just look at that one scripture I'm about to prophesy to you and I need you to have this understanding Ephesians hmm. let's look at 19 and 20 19 and 20 quickly please Ephesians 2 19 now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and he said all of you are members of the household of God right 21 okay 20 he says and are built upon what the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone listen you must understand how God built the body he said the moment you get born again there are two ministries you must encounter if your destiny must arise he says you must encounter these foundational ministries the ministries of the apostles and the prophets it's not about human worship it's how God built the kingdom he said it is built upon this truth foundation there means upon this truth this revelation is called the foundation of the Lord he said nevertheless the foundation of the Lord does what stand sure you can't change it it stands sure so by a prophet every time people cry God never comes to them he comes to them through a man go and read your Bible when there was famine God came to a man there are human beings that God have sent that hold the prayer points of people that carry anointings that can open the destinies of people but the Bible tells us that you have a role to play let's look at that one scripture second Chronicles 2020 right your job is to believe second Chronicles 2020 he said believe in the Lord your God so you shall be established but it's not enough to just believe in God he said believe in his prophets he didn't say the prophets believe in his prophets so shall he make progress 
so shall ye do well so shall ye prosper see this is the formula don't try to create another one you will punish yourself for nothing the church was built on the foundations every time god hears the cry of a people he goes to a man and he says you heard their cry i thought god will come to egypt by himself but he went to moses When creation was crying in sin, Jesus had to become a man because they searched and no man was righteous enough. So Jesus became a man. Even God did not come directly. He had to become flesh. Are you not seeing how it works? When the revelation of the, of the New Testament was to come to the body, a man had to be found in the name of Apostle Paul and he brought that fellowship of the mystery to the body of Christ. When Satan wants to destroy you, he will make you believe in God and disrespect his prophets. Are you seeing that? He won't tell you to stop believing in God. He will say, believe in God. After all, everybody has equal access to God. And you will fool yourself and see that you are praying and fasting, but nothing is happening. When the widow in Zarephath was in trouble, God went to a man immediately. And said I have commanded you go are you not seeing it when Samaria was in trouble I thought God would have gone to them he never went to the lepers he brought in a man and he said by this time the moment the man spoke God looked for lepers in other words the tool God will use is not necessary let the prophecy just come he can use anything an axe head can float back when a stick comes but it must be at the instruction of the prophet he said alas master for it was borrowed and he said where fell it if that man threw a stick nothing would happen but he did it at the word prophecy is powerful i learned this from god's servant bishop david Oyedin. he has changed the lives of people with prophecy but it only works to them that believe you don't receive a prophetic word from a colleague you don't receive a prophetic word from a friend I've taught it here there are individuals that are not pure human beings lift your hands God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me God's ability One more time. God's ability. God's ability. Hallelujah. I've shared with you again and again my visions. How that I saw an endless sea of people and they were crying. No food, no water. And I said, who is the cause? And they pointed at me. Ah, and I was afraid because some people had chased me to come into that small room where I was hiding. And I made up my mind. I said, I was still going to go out and rescue them. If I perish, I perish. The moment I opened the door, I saw a giant. And he held my hands. And he said, I will walk with you. Brothers and sisters, this is not, it's not about human beings or human boasting. It's about God's spiritual system arguing it is foolishness there are many prisoners today pain the foundation of the lord and the bible says that foundation is the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic i want to speak over your life listen the year is not too late for God to finish what he said he would do. Are we together? Oh no, come on. We have at least 20 more days. It doesn't take time. Is it not a prophet of God that said by this time tomorrow? It doesn't take time. It's, it's only unto men according to their faith. 
don't say it's the end of the year god does not work with human calendar he works with his word the moment the word of god comes he said he said let there be and there was in the name that is above all names i prophesy over your life every package that is meant to come into your destiny in this year of the rain that is yet to be delivered i prophesy it into your life right now in the name of jesus i prophesy it into your life right now in the name of jesus i prophesy it into your life right now in the name of jesus every request you have dropped here from january february march april may and now it's december and it looks like god has failed you let me prophesy to you that by 31st of december in the name of the lord jesus you will be holding your testimony i prophesy to you that by 31st of december you will be holding your testimony it may not be possible with men but the bible says with god we are involving god in this talk every level of prosperity you should have entered in this year of the rain and for whatever reason and by any means you have not entered it let this next 20 days days of financial supplies hallelujah that spirit that destroys men towards the end of the year that people would have labored have you seen obituaries 28 december 29 december some even 31st in the name that is above all names may a seal of longevity come upon your life may a seal of longevity come upon your life i forbid death from coming towards your habitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray for you the frustration you usually face at home there are some of us December times are times of pain poverty this December will be the best you have ever had I prophesy this December will be the best you have ever had in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has troubled your heart everything that has brought tears to your life you cannot even share with people because of the pains I prophesy to you tonight the Prince of Peace is stepping into that situation I declare unto you the Prince of Peace is stepping into that situation every challenge in your health every sickness I don't care what it is that has refused to go this night in the name of Jesus we challenge it and we command it to live your life forever we command it to live your life forever a dimension of favor you did not see from january to november i decree that you will have it beginning from this night i prophesy it again beginning from this night not tomorrow this night may that dimension of favor come over your life in the name of jesus everything you are praying for is restoration there are people who have lost things and you are trusting God you are saying Lord before the end of the year let a miracle come 
the bible says they are taking for a prey and none say it restore in the name that is above all names i prophesy restoration for you i prophesy restoration for you in a way and a manner that you have not heard listen did you hear the testimony of pastor femi and his family 18 years even if it's one one thousand they are paying you every month at the end of 18 years you will have something to smile enough with if your salary was hundred thousand calculated times 18 years plus benefit and allowance that kind of restoration in the name that is above all names may it come upon your life tonight i prophesy to you receive that restoration right now the testimony that you need to take home as an evidence that this was the year of the rain for you the testimony you must hold and tell people look this is a symbol of god's faithfulness i release it upon your hand right now i release it upon your hand right now in the name of jesus christ may you be a burning and a shining light in the name of jesus christ through your hands many will be healed through your hands many will be saved i place an unction of the almighty upon you that as you go back to your various locations and stations you will come back with a harvest of dramatic testimonies in the name of jesus christ next year for you will be a it will be a balance brought forward of everything everything in the years past that have refused to come it will be a balance brought forward for you in the name of jesus christ listen it is still the year of the rain are you hearing me it is still the year of the rain and i prophesy to you whatever the rain represents within these few weeks we have to the end of the year may you experience the full revelation of what the rain represents hallelujah any human upon the face of the earth who is holding the key to your blessing the key to your breakthrough in the name that is above all names from the north to the south the east and the west between now and 31st december by prophecy i call them into your life by prophecy i call them into your life in the name of the lord jesus christ samuel told saul he said as you go back you will find out that the donkey that has been missing has been found and then he said you will see three men you will see them holding bread they will give you from the bread whoever is holding what is supposed to be given to you whatever resistance and manipulation from hell is stopping them from releasing it i command that between now and the end of the year it comes into your hands in the name of jesus christ I pray for every family represented here the kind of Christmas celebration you have never seen from birth in the name that is above all names may it be experienced this December whatever ties away financial supplies from your families during this festive period so that they celebrate christmas like frustrated people i decree and i prophesy in the name of jesus may it be a different one this time around for those of you who are going to be traveling far and wide we declare that the mystery of the blood goes with you all through in the name of jesus christ in one minute I'd like you to ask everything remaining that you want God to do. Please, in one minute, go ahead. I'm releasing my faith with you. In one minute, every other thing you are trusting God for. Don't say it can't happen. Open your mouth and pray. 
Oh, I release my faith. I release my faith. One can chase a thousand. Two can chase ten thousand. Open your mouth and place a demand on the faithfulness of God. Lord, I still believe you. Pray. Tell him, I still believe. Today is the 11th of December, but I still believe. It says unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come i agree with you that whatever you have declared before god may it become a testimony in the name of jesus christ hallelujah let me make an altar call quickly please i'd like everybody to be around this is our last service i'll make some announcements there are people inside and outside this is the last service you probably were here from january february and every time you hear an altar call like this something resists you from coming out maybe you've never experienced this peace with this prince called jesus or probably there are some of you who have given your hearts to the lord but at one point or the other you found yourself derailing this is our last service let this be the service where you give up on yourself and embrace his majesty i'll count one to five wherever you are i believe that there are still people outside there are still people inside please leave your seats don't wait for anybody to come before you make your way to the front right now one i count one to five wherever you are god bless you as you come they are coming there are people coming from inside and outside clear the way for them god bless you god bless you god bless you don't be ashamed this is the last service for the year. Let it be that at the last Koinonia service, you make a decision for Jesus. The next will be again will be 2016. Don't enter 2016 on sale. God bless you as you come. There are still people God is speaking to outside. Make your way and receive this Prince of Peace. He will change your life forever. hallelujah i salute all of you who are coming the prince of peace the prince of peace is all you need in your life and a simple prayer of faith if you are coming please come and join them clear the way for them come and join them god bless you the devil is a liar don't let any devil stop you as i'm talking if the holy spirit is still speaking to you make your way i know time is up but you need to be saved make your way to the front in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the prince of peace listen he will bring beauty and glory out of your life it doesn't matter what you have done men can condemn you but let me tell you something the mercy of god that throne of grace and mercy is always there he will wipe your sins as if it never happened that's the mercy of god I'm going to lead you to a prayer and i want you to pray passionately from your heart you are not reciting a poem praise the lord pray it from your heart you are talking to a real person his name is jesus and as you pray that prayer a miracle will happen to you and you will leave here tonight having the greatest gift any man can have lift your right hand high above your head so that the devil doesn't think you are pretending and say after me lord jesus I believe in you I know you are the son of God and I believe I ask you tonight forgive my sins cleanse me from all unrighteousness I cry for your mercy I'm tired of living my life my own way this night I make up my mind before your people that you are the lord of my life i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that the power of sin is broken over my life let me pray for you father these hands that are lifted 
receive them and let this be the beginning of a real encounter in their lives i break the power of sin over your life and every voice that speaks judgment i declare that the throne of mercy silences that voice forever in the name of jesus you stand before his presence as though you never sinned having the righteousness of his dear son jesus christ that's the gift he gives you for believing in him and i supply grace upon you to live the victorious christian life this will not be an emotional decision for you to go back to the flesh from today you rise higher and higher never to go down again in the name of jesus christ i welcome you to the greatest family on earth god's own family in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now there is a lady waving her hands i'd like you to just walk up to her she'll have your details and we'll follow you up from the details so please make sure you supply your details god bless you celebrate them as they go celebrate them koinonia dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. the face of development lord grant me the discipline